hello, welcome to lesson nine, which is measurement. The first thing you want to look at is just a reminder of some basic customary units of measure. Again, this isn't everything that we use, but it's some of the more widely used measurements that we see in our day-to-day -day life, things that you would see on a test. You don't necessarily have to memorize all of these, but some of them you really do want to know. It will help you. It'll make you work through a problem faster, and it, they're just good things to know. So for example, 12 inches is one foot. Three feet equals one yard. One mile has 5,280 feet, 5,280. Um, it shows you some temperatures, like normal body temperature is 98.6. Water boils at 200 degrees, 212 degrees Fahrenheit. Water freezes at 32 degrees Fahrenheit. So again, you don't have to memorize every single one of these, but you do want to know how to use them when you're solving for a missing number, which is what we're going to talk about, and solving proportions. So again, we're going back to other lessons that we've already done with proportions, which is helpful. And you'll want to use this slide as you're doing homework. You might be asked to transfer tons to pounds or ounces to pounds. And you can always go back to this chart to help you answer that question. And also, most of the tests that I've seen will give you these conversions. You'll just have to plug in the numbers, again, so you don't have to memorize it. But the more you practice using it, the easier it will be. So let's look at this next slide, which we have some examples. So the first one is 36 inches. So how many yards is 36 inches? So if you look back at that previous slide, it doesn't actually show you how many inches are in a yard. But you can figure this out in steps. So first, you want to convert from inches to feet and then feet to yards. So you could set up a proportion. So 12 inches is one foot, and that is going to equal 36 inches, and then how many feet? So again, we're just setting up a proportion. You're going to cross multiply. 12 times x is 12x. 36 times 1 is 36. And when you work that out, you'll see that 36 inches equals one yard. So again, this is setting up a proportion. And when you are setting up a proportion, you are just trying to figure out two fractions that equal each other. And to figure that out, you're going to cross multiply. Something else to keep in mind when you're setting up a proportion, if you have inches on top and feet on the bottom for the first fraction, you have to keep it the same in the other one. So we have 12 inches on top of one feet, one foot, and 36 inches on top of x, because we're trying to find out how many feet. So inches on top for both, and feet on the bottom for the other. You want to keep it the same. OK, the next slide we're going to look at just shows you a different way you can do the problem, another way to look at it. So if you have to find 3 pounds, you want to find how many ounces that is. So you're going from a larger unit to a smaller one, because pounds, one pound is greater than one ounce. So if you're going from larger to smaller, you can simply multiply. We know from the previous page and from the cheat sheet that there are 16 ounces in one pound. And because we're going from, again, a larger to a smaller, pounds to ounces, we're just simply going to multiply 16 times 3. 16 times 3 is 48. So that means there are 48 ounces in 3 pounds. Again, think about if your answer is reasonable. Ounces are smaller than pounds. So it makes sense that this number is larger, because we're talking about two equal units. This one's in pounds. This one's in ounces. Ounces are smaller. So that's why we multiplied. Again, you can set this up like a proportion, or you can do this. You have to use which, the way that works better for you. 
Here's another example, 32 ounces. Now we're going from ounces to pounds. We want to know how many pounds are in 32 ounces. Now we're going from a smaller unit to a larger unit, from ounces to pounds. So we're going to divide. It almost sounds like the opposite of what you would think, but again, we're going from smaller to large. So we're going to divide this number. So we know 16 ounces are in one pound. So you do 32 divided by 16, you get two. So 32 ounces is two pounds. And a good way to practice this is if you're at home doing story problems or just you know finishing your homework, take a look around the house at things that you have. Water bottles, soda bottles, boxes. Um, I have a box of gnocchi and it gives me the weight in ounces, it's 12 ounces, and then it gives me the weight in grams, 340 grams. But what if I needed to find out how many pounds that is? So if I'm following a recipe and it calls for a pound and a half of gnocchi, I don't know what a pound is because I only know these ounces in the grams. So I would have to figure that out. Another example are liquids, so milk. Sometimes you buy a gallon of milk, a half gallon, a quart. This is a half gallon. So we want to be able to go from pints to quarts, quarts to gallons, and so on. So here are a couple of story problems involving those two items. So the half gallon of milk holds two quarts. How is this represented in pints? So we already know, again, based on what we're given, that there are two pints in one quart. We want to know how many pints there are in two quarts. So we could set it up like this, a proportion. So two pints for one quart, but this holds two quarts. So we have two times two, four, and then one times x is x. So that one's simple. So that means there are four quarts. I'm sorry, four pints. We want four, we wanted pints. And so again, we are going from, we are going from larger to smaller, so you can multiply, because we're going from a larger unit, which is quarts, and we're trying to find pints. So two times two, you get four pints. And again, you could do that with pints, cups, quarts, gallons, whatever it is. The next example, if the box of gnocchi is 12 ounces, how many pounds is it? So again, my recipe calls for you know, a pound and a half or two pounds. I have to figure out how to convert from the ounces to pounds. How many pounds is this 12 ounce box? So I know that there is one pound, there are 16 ounces, but I wanna know how much 12 ounces is. So I set up my proportion, 12 times one, and then 16 times x is 16x. So I want to get the x by itself. I'm going to divide both sides by 16. Now notice you're dividing. It's also a fraction. So you have to figure out, is it easier for you to reduce the fraction and change it, or to simply divide? 12 divided by 16 is 0.75. So what does that mean? It means that 12 ounces is 0.75 pounds. Now, you might think, well, why is it less than one? But again, you have 12 ounces versus 16 ounces. So this is another problem where you really think about your answer. You should already know that this number is going to be less than one. Because if 16 ounces is in one pound, but I have less than 16 ounces, my number should be less than one whole. So you could set it up as a proportion again, or because you're going from ounces to pounds, from small to larger, you're dividing. So 12 ounces divided by what we know is in one pound, and that will give us 0.75. So I would practice both ways while you are doing your problems. Again, you don't have to do every single problem using both methods, but at least try a couple different problems using 
the proportion method or just the simply dividing or multiplying. The last slide just shows you that some questions are easier to answer than you might think. So you might not even have to do the work. The answer might be right there for you. So, and I've seen this on tests where they just show you a ruler or a thermometer and you are just basically drawing a line from one line to the next. So this is asking you about how many inches is five centimeters. So that top row of numbers represents centimeters. So you just have to find where is that five centimeter line and go straight down and you'll see it's about two. It's like a tiny bit less than two, but not much. So, and again, the question's asking you about how many? So you can answer, it's about two. The next question about how many centimeters are in three inches. So now you're first looking at that bottom row of numbers, which represents inches, and you see where the three inch mark is, and you go straight up, and you can see it's about 7.5, a little bit more than 7.5. So sometimes you don't have to do an actual equation, you can just simply use what's in front of you. So always read carefully and remember that if a question is asking you about how much or approximate, that means it does not have to be exact. It can be close to. So that is all we have for measurements today and we will see you in the next lesson.